welcome to Bex Bug Out Survivor. So we're looking at the Hexon Hammock by Dutchware. One point seven ripstop nylon. I've added a structural ridge line and two of the continuous loops. So eleven foot hammock. I'm going to have to be very cautious about the span that I use. It's going to be a bigger span than I would usually consider. Now I've only actually put this hammock up at base. I haven't actually been in it. I'm going to play about with the distance of the trees with it being 11 foot. But let's have a look at what it is you get. I think it's, it's okay. It's um, pretty lightweight. This could fit into my Hyperlite kit. This is the pack for my Hyperlite kit. Although in this I have an under quilt which isn't part of the Hyperlite kit. Get something like this. I've added in some of the bells and whistles such as two continuous loops for the end channel suspension. I've just put S beaners on mine. That's to accommodate an under quilt. Um, and a structural ridge line. I have had that in my cargo pocket. This is a parachute nylon hammock. This one costs about 20 quid. You can get them from China for less than 10 quid. Um, all singing and dancing at about 60 quid, but this is ripstop nylon. This is what they're calling parachute nylon. It is not made of parachutes. Um, nowhere near, nowhere near. It's just called parachute nylon. I find this fabric cold to the touch. It's the only drawback. That's why I like ripstop nylon. Now the bag itself here is argon. Beautiful material argon. The actual material itself of the hammock, uh, with it being a ripstop nylon feels a lot better next to your skin. I've got a couple of tree straps. They're not the best tree straps in the world. These are going to get changed out as well uh, to the Dutch tree straps, which I have a pair of at home. I'm just going to use these little cheap ones for now. Uh, it'll be connected with the Beckett hitch. With the structural ridge line, I should get a much better um, diagonal lie. I can take or leave the diagonal lie in my little eight foot hammock here. I can lie in this perfectly flat, lying straight down the centre. There is a method um, that can accommodate that kind of sleep. ridge line so it's not adjustable it is set for this hammock so 11 foot hammock and 110 inch structural ridge line there's a big difference between the ripstop nylon hammocks and the little cheap parachute nylon hammocks you get and it does reflect in the price so this is a good step up if you've only ever had the parachute nylon hammocks. What started off quite high up is now sitting really quite low to the ground. So this particular hammock has a lot of stretch in it and I'm pretty much as high up the tree as my arms can span. So I can still tweak that line which is the structural ridge line so it's pretty good there. It needs playing about with should have bought the Dutchware tree straps also. A smaller hammock, like the parachute nylon hammocks, like I said before, you can sleep straight up and down the middle of them. 11 foot hammock this, so only this size can accommodate a true diagonal lie, which is an asymmetrical lie. Wow, it is pretty cosy. 
but I'm going to uh, take it apart and like I said just find two trees closer together this is going to need playing about with let's hold it up to the sun so we can see and each square you can see here is divided into six diamonds so that's a really good weave the hem is a single stitch on the edges along here if we come to the very end we should have a triple stitch and it's good to see a row of three straight stitches now you do get a chain stitch which where if one stitch comes undone it all comes undone and that was on my little 20 quid parachute nylon hammock with this three lots of single stitches if one of these fails I have other backups here and it's not going to come unthreaded and if I catch it early enough it's easy to fix the stuff sack is open-ended both sides ideally I would want one side of this hammock higher than the other if I sleep with my head in a lower elevation to my feet I'll have a lot less slip let's test the fabric out the stretch like I said before is coming from the actual tree suspension and it's falling as we speak so an opportunity there to upgrade to the Dutch um, webbing tree webbing 15 foot I will get uh, which is the biggest he does this is just cheap webbing the actual quality of the material the way it feels has eliminated all that cold feeling I get when I put it to my face the parachute nylon just felt cold 11 foot hammock which is gonna take some getting used to especially when you consider I've only had nine foot six for my biggest the parachute nylon eight foot this 11 foot so far no cold spots I'm gonna get a better diagonal line now now the SLR should be somewhere around uh, 82 or 83 um, percent of the length of your hammock and that will give you the sag that you need to lie this diagonally I think the hammock cost around $30 I also added in the continuous loops at either end it came to about $60 about 50 odd quid and then I got stung by the customs for £16 yesterday um, I should have seen that one coming I'm going to have to try and put the under quilt on this in quite um, an asymmetrical shape which is going to be a challenge in itself but it's not insurmountable and there's a video on it now this is a netless hammock here in the UK the most we're going to get are the midges and the gnats very rarely do we get mosquitoes um, I would invest in a bug net if you suffer from that I don't I don't they don't bother me I do have a separate hammock which has a bug net and uh, that's 1.1 ripstop nylon but it's nine foot six so I can alternate between the net hammock and the unnetted hammock uh, for different seasons or just however I feel at the time to pack the whole lot into this little stuff sack is pretty easy um, I'll show you a technique that I use but one thing I used to do was hold this end and use my thumbs like that but I'm not going to do that I found a way that's a little easier so just disconnect the bucket hitch there and I bring it in concertina fashion including this little line here grab a section bring it in grab a section bring it in once I get to this part 
I could just stuff the whole lot straight in. So much easier than trying to feed it in with your thumbs. So once customs had stung me, I think I'm coming in somewhere like 76 quid. But now I've seen neater continuous loops. I don't know what's gone on there. It's structural, it'll, it'll hold, but it, it's a shame uh, that the attention to detail just wasn't there. It's too early to give an overall opinion. It's certainly comfortable, it's certainly wide enough uh, to get an asymmetrical lay and it's certainly long enough for that purpose also not been out in it for the night yet that will be coming pretty soon I should imagine I think this is pretty much as much as I'd want to pay remember the structural ridge line and two continuous loops were extra so until next time you take care of yourself happy trails or as Dutch would say Thank you everybody, bye bye. Right, quick stop off for a cold drink. Just had a bit of a, a rainfall, it got a bit chilly, now I've got sweat on me, Whew, I need to cool down. The method I'm going to use to hang the actual quilt has been tested at base and that's it. So this will be the overnight test to see even if it works. I'll be using the Dutch Hexon hammock, a 1.6 ripstop nylon, I'm going to just fix myself very quick drink this is the ration pack for tonight I was just gonna make myself a powder drink but I think this is required now just put my raincoat under the hood climb a little fence down there to get here so I threw the pack over the fence and then I got over and did the last what two three hundred meters perhaps without the waistband on my pack done up and it carries really well even without the waistband and I would say a little bit better actually so I think I've been having the waistband far too tight Mm. Right then, it's not going to be hammock first because there's a different way I'm hanging the actual under quilt and it's all going to be based really on the ridge line for the top. There is scope to get all this a lot more condensed which we're going to talk about a little later. And I've separated two sections a left and a right there's prussics all the way along there's carabiners there's all sorts it's going to be tricky to demonstrate and to uh, do on camera but i'll explain it as best as i can I need this ridge line under here now for the under quilt. I put a three mil prosec here, which is just a drip stop, which goes at the end. 
So if it does rain, hopefully, if it does rain, hopefully, this drip stop will stop the water from ingress. This is four mil bungee onto a beaner. It's the same for the other side. I've centered it, but now I'm going to move it along. Oh, just have to loosen it off first. It's a bit tight. There you go. Somewhere near the end. Now the quilt is going to go into this. I have a separate left and right from my channel, which is convenient because I can make two loops on the end and snap it into this beaner again onto a prusik. That's the under quilt on, but it's sat on the floor as you can see. To simply pull in on the prusik elevates the lift for the under quilt. So under quilt is connected to the top line and we haven't even got the hammer cut by the way. You can put the under quilt on first if you like. So that's the next one, the hammock. So on this here, you see that the hammock line is at the same height as the shelter. And this will mean I'm not crouched down getting in and out of the shelter. So I've put this system up a few times so I kind of know the measurements of where along the web in here I want to position this uh, hammock. With this set up if I reach my fingertips to the end of the tarp I need to start tying the hammock at arm span under my arm here that kind of length now if I do that on both sides then I know I'm there. I always use body parts to span things. Finger, little finger to thumb, fingertip, armpit, arm stretch. Now if you arm stretch from fingertip to fingertip um, is identical in length to your own body height. So it's all connected up. The hammock running through the quilt, coming out the other side. This is the foot end. And usually I would like to have the foot end a lot higher than the head end. This is as high as I can get without throwing the hammock web in here over that. Buzzard swoop straight down low. Gone. Just going to get the elevation a little better on the actual hammock. Nothing wrong with the underquilt, that's uh, snug enough. I just want to be in a higher seated position and I don't really want to make that adjustment on the head end here. So if I'm going to raise anywhere, it is going to be here. On the foot end. I've just got to adjust the quilt further down the foot end. So it stopped raining, t-shirts well dried out, got a spare in my pack, 
but now I can take my leggings off just undo the boots first and I've got 100% polyester walking trousers and usually I have a spare pair of these as well now polyester on its own quite lightweight but also if it's not warm weather it can be quite cool so I've got my long johns on underneath here and these little polyester trousers um, can make into shorts either board shorts or knee shorts as a zip here and here so I can vary the height of my shorts and yet yeah, still keep my long johns on underneath it doesn't always uh, look that pretty but it, it's practical and it's what works now usually when I get into camp oh, crying out loud hot yeah usually when I get into camp I change my pants completely and I'm pretty sure I've got tracksuit trousers in my clothing allowance if that's the case these are coming off um, I'll have to see how damp the long johns are this is a stuff sack that the top came in stuff sack is in a lark's head hitch comes down here and stow my bits and bobs in and i'm pretty sure i bought a night lantern rather than the led strands okay and then here is my little lantern it's run or powered rather just on little tea like candles and a but handful of them out each one will last somewhere around two and a half maybe three hours well that one's gone time to put another one in like that I've only bought the one lighter with me tonight so I've got emergency storm matches whether it's the hammock ridge line or the tarp ridge line I don't know Ow. Back. twinge in my back then so this is a ridge line off the tarp my knife and my ferro rod little lantern again I've got to dig out a lighter for it and my headlight torch rechargeable off USB and I've got my USB um, power bank. I think I'll put my foot mat in the front here. Foot mat. Yeah, I like sleeping in these. They're not so great to carry. Spare pair of socks. Use them in the morning. Yeah, not great to carry. Not lightweight. The cotton. I only ever use cotton once I'm at camp. Now the lightweight walking polyester trousers can come off. Oh, it's handy having this ridge line to balance myself on. Oh, oh that's a good height. This is pretty much a no frills hammock. It's about mid price. It was from Dutch wear. It's called the Hexon 1.6. Now I have a 1.1 hammock, which is that green one with the bug netting. Hell of a lot of stretch in it. Hell of a lot. 1.1 is 1.1 ounces per square yard of material. 1.6. 1.6 ounces of material for this hammock here. To get zero stretching hammock you'd be looking at polyester and I've got a polyester hammock and I've already filmed a night out with that um, and that will be coming up in a few weeks time but the polyester hammock was the one I used on the big freeze night the bright yellow one and uh, it got me through that uh, freeze quite nicely it got down to minus 14 on that storm that came over from Russia 
um, in the hammock under the tarp it was minus six in the shelter with me and remember I, I was powering it with hot water bottles and it, quilts and sleeping bags and everything I got it up to 22 degrees above um, but I've learned from that I, I could probably get the same upper temperature with less kit right as soon as I've done this I'm gonna get my dinner on boots back on oh these cotton pants are nice and warm with my long johns underneath or my johnny long pants as I call them because there's no zips or buttons or sharp objects that are going to rip your quilt and eventually these are going to be changed out for goose down um, jet boil haters are going to hate this episode because I bought it out now the jet boil is designed for ration pack meals so you can't do a big fry up in it it's not a bushcraft stove then again nobody ever claimed it was and I actually get commenters going oh what have you got the jet boil for it's because I've got ration packs in here and that is what the jet boil is for and these people who hate the jet boils probably have never used one or realized that it's the size it is so it fits in a webbing pouch on your webbing and it's the size it is because it fits a ration pack in now i have managed to get the brew pack a lot lighter because i have taken all the wet meals from my British Army ration packs and I've dehydrated them. Now I could use my little penny stove or my cat stove. By the time I've added the liquid fuel to it, it is no different in volume. These are the wet meals from British Army ration pack. You see, they're not, they're not small. I've actually made my own. Okay, I'm gonna make a brew before dinner and I make mine in a flask 500 mil now I find I kind of make a lot of coffee I'm making one every at least one an hour 300 mil at a time 500 mil will last me all night now I can save a good three four hundred mil half a litre nearly of water just by bringing this here's my dinner I'll show you this after I've made my brew, I just want to make a whole flask of coffee. Get my stove out. Jet boil! <laughs> Imagine what these people would be like with a bloody problem in their life. <laughs> A little glacier cup, for instance, wouldn't be sufficient enough to bring uh, a boil in the bag meal together because it just wouldn't fit in. Uh, depending on what stove you bring, also, will be dependent on the type of meals you're going to be doing. I really want to get into dehydration because I, I've got a dehydrator. Um, it's a big learning curve for me. I don't generally like to watch other people's videos on how they do their hydrating and rehydrating and so forth. I like to actually just do it my way. And yes, I know I'm going to mess up, but it's from their mistakes that I like to learn. I find if I watch somebody else's video um, on a certain subject, there's a chance I might be learning their mistakes. Now my petrol stove is quite heavy, quite a bulk. I do like that for the winter. Boy, do I love that. I can uh, pop that in a pouch and it fires up each and every time and it runs on petrol. 
um, and all I need to do is pop some red X into it and it'll uh, run through a stove or better still run it on Aspen 4 there's nothing I would consider when you're using ration pack food it needs a tall cylinder to cook it in or a rectangular mess tin to submerge it in water and this is coming to a boil that was quick 100 seconds I meant to let this water cool down really before adding the coffee but you know me I'm a bit of a maverick there you go something else for them crybabies to get upset about now I do want to really get the brew pack smaller and of course I use real ground coffee now I can replace sugar with sweetener and I needn't even bring out the little dispenser for it I can dispense individual little sweeteners into a zip bag a ziplock bag um, I could probably have tea and coffee black really doesn't bother me I'd prefer a lot more with a bit of creamer a bit of milk powder um, but I could use tea bags tea bags don't take up that much room um, and neither do they little sweeteners sweeteners are as about as sweet as sticking my big toe in me coffee for what good they do now I'm meant to wait for the water to cool really before I put the coffee in I've already pushed the plunger because I'm impatient <laughs> don't like it This tends to make quite a nice coffee, uh, the little coffee press there, because somebody was asking, and as usual, I, I don't write people's names down, who I really should, but you know who you are, who asked what kind of coffee it makes, is it nice? Like I said, if you let the water cool before you add the coffee, plunge it gently, it'll make a really nice coffee don't use fine ground coffee use a coarse ground I've got fine grounds I don't get bits of coffee in this I, I used to because I think the plastic hadn't expanded on the actual plunger and over time and enough uses it's expanded it fits the pot a lot better I love strong coffee. Wow, that's the strongest so far. Making my eyes water. Now, I had tarp pullouts, which I really wanted to test out tonight. I configured the tarp in such a way with the tarp pullouts it would pool water so I could collect water I'm always short of water in the morning because I bought a filter and I was going to filter the rainwater that I collected on the tarp and then I could use that um, for drinks and even to wash but I cannot find them and I bet you I've left it in another pack because I wasn't going to use the Osprey that's the Osprey and I was going to use my Brandit Aviator. It just houses larger quilts better. Oh, better. On the grab handle here. 
I have a bean and I just hang my pack up here if it was a Bergen I'd have a different method but it's not a Bergen and it's fine and so far it's held up I generally like to take the weight out of the pack which means oh, taking the water out put this to one side so that's a lot of the weight out of the pack oh, excuse me a lot of the weight out of the pack for the evening I've just had to pull down this side here and peg it down the rain has just started what I have got in here a pack cover and it's gonna help I'm going to ensure I have my drip lines on the ridge line secured for tonight there you go one there push that up tighten it if any water does come down this line it'll gather on here and drip off this knot here fingers crossed dinner time all right i've brought with me my secondary base layer which is going on now other than that coat and this this is all i've got so i am solely going to be reliant on the quilt doing a job 80 percent of my heat can be retained from escaping through this hat and this is quite a nice coat as well again i've nicked it off my missus she went out so i shoved it in my pack she would go mad if she knew i had this again ah, what's better ah got some spare cord so if i can find a stick i can elevate this side here and now we're in porch mode just winged up one side just gives me a little more shelter and space if it's not gonna rain if it is gonna rain I reckon the water might just pool in the middle there it probably will just run off this way where my finger is and down here and land there if not I might be able to salvage some of the water if it's too cool in the night I'm just going to bring this side of the tarp down to the ground and discard the stick it is dinner time I've cleaned out my pot half fill it now after I've boiled up my dinner I can pour this water back in my bottle once it's cool there we go get this fired up I have some chilli con carne with pasta it's vegetable chilli and I put it in one of these type of bags and this bag is going directly in there which is going to warm my dinner in the fullness of time this type of meal will be dehydrated and it won't weigh as much but I'll still have to bring just as much weight because I'd have to rehydrate my water with an equal amount that I've dehydrated from that hope that makes sense okay the color change yeah and you'll actually see in real time this coming to a boil as that red color change starts making its way up to the top here and this is in real time there you go it's nearly at the top that's handy if you're away from your camp for a, a few seconds remind you to turn it off but I'm going to turn mine down rather than off need to take ow 
the lid off and keep it off because I need to put this in that's my dinner in got it on a nice little simmer with the lid off and I'm gonna give that five six seven minutes however long I think it's gonna take so unlike my other hammock that I took out which had all the bells and whistles on which was more to go wrong I tried putting the X-Ped down mat in that collapsed in the night it wasn't that warm the quilts have a, a knack to going on that particular one this hammock here the quilts go on a lot better although you've seen I've got a different technique to put my quilts on the Hexon 1.6 by Dutch wear the actual hammock itself no bells and whistles there is one which has elastic gadgets on to tighten the sides of the hammock I didn't go for that option I just wanted a hammock and that was it 11 foot the biggest one I've got the green one nine foot six and there's a bit of a pig this should be straightforward so it was pretty cheap I ordered some extras for it but once again customs got hold of it it was game over for me yeah so I just want to have a quick word with everyone really I want to say a massive thank you to all the new subscribers there's been a lot of you over the past couple of months so a big thank you to you guys I hope you're enjoying yourself so far a lot of people may be misled by believing that channels like this and like mine you make a lot of money for a YouTube you don't you don't 10 views you get about a penny or something like that or a hundred views a penny um, it works out something like 10 pence per episode it's not worth actually having advertising on your channel and them kind of channels rely not just on advertising but a high subscriber count and I didn't really want that I don't I'm not that desperate for 10 pence that I need such a high subscriber count which is why I always say anyone who's not happy with anything they've seen or they don't like can unsubscribe I really do appreciate my supporters so a massive massive thank you to all the new subscribers especially my supporters have been there since day one again I don't make any money out of it if you want to unsubscribe do so it won't change my life a bit I would always be doing this um, whether I record it or not it's just been a good platform YouTube to allow me to bring a couple of cameras with me and just bring you guys along to see the kit develop over the years you get to see some of the things I like some of the things I don't like and things I've made as well which I've taken out and I've been really happy with sometimes it's nice to sit in the hammock other times I enjoy being part of nature and just sitting on the floor so this was a tin of I was gonna say dog food then it'll probably look like it no it's a tin of um, vegetable chili and I made some pasta oh it looks nice the chili con carne I made some pasta put it in one of these little packets that is the extent of the cooking that you need do for your camp that's hot enough mm. that is really nice now when I looked at some of the British Army ration packs as I was dehydrating them 
I notice how similar some of these were to things that you just get in a tin from your local supermarket. Um, so, really, things like this are all you need. At home, I've also done a tin of curry um, and I got some rice which I'm pre boiled or the microwave rice. Split it into another two of these. One is Mark Chicken Tikka Masala rice, the other is Lamb Rogue and Josh and rice. This is chili con carne and pasta. And you can keep these in your fridge, you can dehydrate them. Um, I'm not sure whether you could just vacuum seal this as it is. Don't know. But I am going to dehydrate these type of meals. Learn how to use them properly or better. The only other alternative you could do something like this is a rectangular mess tin. Submerge this in water. And bring it to the boil in whatever stove you want. That's one alternative. This is a convenient alternative. I could tip the contents of this, which is pre-cooked, into any pan, any pan I wanted, and warm it up. I could also eat this cold, it's pre-cooked, just like an army ration. Just wondering if I brought a hot sauce with me. Because the British Army ration packs come with like a Tabasco sauce, which would have been nice in that. And on one camp, I put far too much in. Um, about half a bottle. And they're only little bottles. I, I find about five droplets is enough for that. I'm, I put half a bottle in. And I had my little trowel digging a hole as quick as I could. Don't want to bring the tone down or anything. This is nice. There we are. It's dark time. Whoa. Tear us down. I'm going to blind myself. Right then. No, it's too dark. That's better. Okay. I have set the quilt up in a very different way, as you can tell. Um, I don't usually like to set the quilt to the actual hammock. I find it doesn't work. I'll either tie the quilt to a tree on paracord or like I'm trying here, just hang it from the top ridge line. It is pictures out there, which means I am just about ready to get, I think, some hot chocolate in that flask. <sighs> so I shall see you in a minute or in the morning as it is for me until then nighty night it's 20 to 6 had to do a very quick repitch on the top. It is morning time. There is plenty of daylight out there. There you have it. The top is nearly on top of me. I had to bring it right, right down. It's not been a bad night. I'm warm enough, as you can see. But I haven't even got a t-shirt on, and I'm plenty warm. But I have an Airtex army shirt in the pack somewhere. I'm going to put that on. My back feels damp somehow. Probably sweat. <sighs> and I haven't taken care of it properly. I'm quite warm now. Just the tarp to come down now. 
what was it like? Rained all night again. Um, I'm going to put carabiners back in at the end of the continuous loop. I had them on the Beckett hitch. But all in all, it's not been bad. It's not been bad. Not been cold, not been wet. Um, just a little bit of a chill on my back. And that's about it. Now hanging the quilts from up here, pretty good, pretty good. And of course, I'd rather actually tie the quilt to the actual tree. So, this is going to be the last thing down for me. And until next time, take care of yourself. And I'll see you out there. Take care.